Hey friends, welcome back to She's At It Again. My name's Tanya, and today's recipe is for a pineapple millionaire pie. And if you'll remember years ago, there was a popular cafeteria style restaurant. I, I wanna say it was Luby's, but I could be wrong about that. We had one in Tulsa when we lived there, so I think that might be what it is. But they served what's called a millionaire pie, and I had a relative that loved those pies. So every time his birthday rolled around, he knew that's what he was getting for me. No gift no card, no nothing, just a pie. And he ate the whole thing by himself. So let's go in the kitchen. We're gonna start with a homemade pure butter crust made with a little bit of sour cream. And I've shown you this before in a different context. We made something with a crust on it. I can't even remember what it was now, but it was several weeks ago. But this is gonna be for a pie. We're just gonna make one, but I have my butter in the freezer already. So we're ready to grate that up and get a crust made. We'll go through the whole process. So. Stay tuned, it should be entertaining. And if not that, it'll be delicious. Okay, I just realized that as I was finishing up that introduction, I was thinking to myself earlier, man, that's kind of nice. The laundry's not going, the neighbors aren't having their lawn mowed, nobody's doing anything in our yard. This is kind of quiet, this is nice. It's a good time to do a video. And then I realized as I was ending that, the clock was dinging in the other room. So I, I can't miss a clock. We have several clocks that make noises. And that's one of them. So anyway, what you heard at the end of that was probably the clock, but who knows? My husband may be genius enough to edit it out. I don't know. So anyway, okay, we're going to get started. Um, rule of thumb here, when you're making anything, almost without exception, unless of course it's going in the refrigerator and you don't have space, it's always better to use a bowl that's too large rather than one that's too small because you can always use it as your washing bowl when you take it to the sink to wash your dishes. I mean, it's not gonna cost any more. It's not gonna be any more effort to use a larger bowl. But if you use a bowl that's too small, you risk all your ingredients, or some of them anyway, going outside the rim of this, and then you don't know how much you have left. You don't know how much you have to work with. So all that being said, that's why I use sometimes a bowl that's way too big. Um, I follow a, a gal on YouTube and she's so entertaining to watch. She's so stinking cute, but man, she keeps using a bowl that her ingredients are just heaped up to the top and then she's still got to stir it. I'm like, how do you do that? So anyway, you'll see me using bowls that are way too big and you may be going, hey, what are you doing with such a big bowl? Well, that's why, because I don't want my ingredients going out. So we're going to start out with a cup of all-purpose flour in our bowl. So just a level cup. You probably can't see that from there, but it's a level cup. Uh, let's see. I also need the salt out of here. We're going to need a half a teaspoon of salt. There's my pink Himalayan salt. And there's another clock going off. Apparently we don't really care what time it is, but you know, get, give or take 15 minutes or so because one could go off and several minutes later another one go off too. So it's a wonder we're on time for anything. All right, gonna give that just a little stir. I'm gonna get a fork because that's what actually stirs this better. So you heard me say I have my butter in the freezer. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I freeze my butter. And we have to work fast with it once I get it out of the freezer. There's my grater and it's frozen as well. I had it in the freezer. So we are gonna grate up six tablespoons of butter. I probably should have cut those extra two tablespoons off before I got started, but it's okay. That, that's, that's hard. <laughs> it broke into shreds because it's so frozen. And that's okay, that's what we want. We want it to be super, super cold. So I'm holding on to this rubber part to keep from transferring heat into the grater itself. But working as quickly as you can Grate that butter into your bowl.
You're just going to be grating it on top of the flour. Stop about halfway through and toss around what you have grated in there just to get each little piece coated in flour. If any of it flies out of the bowl, even though my bowl is a big bowl, throw that little thing back in there. So basically what you're after is with pastry is you want little blobs of butter and each one coated in flour. So when it cooks, the steam from the moisture inside the flour, the butter is going to make these little layers in your pastry. That's what makes it nice and, and flaky and it's just a more desirable pastry. Now, if you keep stirring it up, you use hot butter, you do one of several different things to it wrong, and it's just not gonna be as flaky. But this way, um, is just, it. I, I will say this, it's my favorite way of doing it. I did it with a pastry blender for years. I've got my old pastry blender in the drawer, went through a house fire, I still rescued it and said, you know what? I don't need a new one because I've used this since I've been married and we've been married almost 40 years now. So apparently using a pastry blender isn't a bad thing. It's just, I find the pastry just turns out better like this. I can't explain it, but I'd seen several people do it. And then after, after I tried it once, that's probably been about a year ago. I thought, okay, yeah, if as long as I can remember to put my butter in the freezer, and my grater, then we're good. So ever since then, I've done it this way, and it does turn out really, really nice. All right, next thing we want is three tablespoons of water and a tablespoon of sour cream. Now, what you don't wanna do is get the sour cream that is a low fat or something like that. You want that high fat content still in it. So we're gonna get three tablespoons of actually ice water. Okay, there's our ice water. Sometimes I get all my stuff out here on the countertop ahead of time and sometimes I just don't and it's been a day full of doing different things. So um, I wasn't as organized as what I like to be, but that's okay. Just flying by the seat of my pants here. All right, one tablespoon of sour cream in there. And then our three tablespoons of ice cold water. Put this back in the fridge. And we're gonna give this a stir. And just like with any pastry, you're probably gonna look at it first and say, that's not enough moisture in there. I need some more water, but don't, don't do that. Resist the urge. You're just gonna work this until it forms a ball. You're not gonna keep stirring it. And this is not a dough that you're going to need like flour and yeast and things to make bread. This is a pastry and the less you handle it, the better it is because the more you handle it, once the water's added, the more gluten it forms and the less desirable it will be. So we want it to be desirable, not less desirable. And if you see what looks like dirt on my hands, it's not, it's paint. Remember I said I had a full day. I've been painting signs to put in my neighbor's yard because it's his birthday. And he's gone. <laughs> and we're not sure when he's coming back, but he has signs in his yard when he comes back. And I don't just get out markers and paint posters. I have to get out paints. When I say paints, I mean all the paints. I got to get out all the paints 
house paint, uh, acrylic paints, craft paints, every kind of paint. Because you just never know what color he might need. <laughs> so, full day getting that out and then putting it up. All right, when it gets to this point, it looks something like this. We're going to take and just start mashing it together. So basically, you're taking the dry part, the drier part, which is just little flakes of butter coated in flour, and you're going to start pushing it into the one, the part of it that has the most moisture in it. So kind of like picking up little specks of clay. You know, you played with Play-Doh, and you have your big ball of Play-Doh, and you just take it and press it on the other spots to pick it up, and that's kind of what we're doing with this. Taking your hand, pressing it together. And again, you're still going to think there's not enough moisture in it. I do this every time. I've been making pies for a long time because it's one of my favorite things to make. When I was in high school, I may have told you this story before, but when I was in high school, of course, you know ahead of time because the people in the upperclassmen tell you what they do in home ec class or consumer science, whatever you call it. And so we knew that we were going to learn how to make biscuits because this is the South. And you also learn how to make a pie crust. Of course, back in the day, we used shortening. It, it wasn't a health class. It wasn't nutrition. It was just learning how to make things. And that's how we knew how to make them. And... Of course, you always get the people in the class that are trying to be funny and they ruin theirs. And then they're trying to, there are people who are trying to do good and they also fail at it and it kind of falls apart. Well, for some reason, it was, it was just my lucky day and my pie crust looked so good and it stayed together. I have no idea what I was doing. I don't think I'd ever made one before. I'm not sure, but it looked so good. My teacher was just baffled and thought maybe, I don't know, somebody else came in and did it for me or something. But from then on, I was the self-proclaimed pie queen because mine didn't fail that day. So mind over matter. And it apparently didn't matter that I really didn't know what I was doing. But because it turned out right that time, I knew what I was doing. Just, um... Just a suggestion that you're good at something and automatically become good at it. So I don't think, I don't know that I've ever had a pie crust fail. I mean, as strange as that sounds, even recipes that I try that, oh, that looks fun. And I try it and they actually turn out right. So I don't really know what I'm doing right because I've never done it a different way. But as many things as I am absolutely horrible at and don't even get me started because the list is too long, I'm actually pretty good at making pie crust. All right, I'm gonna take that and wrap it in some wax paper. So we're gonna, we, add it, we have it rolled in a ball like that. I'm gonna flatten it out just a bit. And all I wanna do is just get this cold enough to where when I roll it out, it doesn't get real floppy. So just chilling it. So going to stick this in the fridge and we'll be back in just a bit.
Okay, I don't know how long it's been uh, in the refrigerator. So it's been in there. My guess would be maybe 40 minutes. I don't know. I had a FaceTime call come in and I was cutting up a pineapple. So I lost track of time. All right, so we have our dough. It's chilled a bit. It's not super hard. It's still pretty flexible, but it's colder than what it was. So we're gonna sprinkle a little bit of flour on our countertop. And this is my pie pan. This is just a, just a, just a shiny aluminum pan. The shinier, the better. Do not use a dark one. Um, well, actually you could use a dark one for this because this is just a baked pie crust. It's not a full pie, but I always like using shiny pie pans and ceramic ones and glass ones, especially those are nice. But this is just an inexpensive pan, just in case uh, the person I'm giving to given the pie to forgets to send the pie pan back, it's okay. <coughs> Sorry, I'm over there sneaking pecans. I have to toast some pecans for this pie, so when we put our pie crust in the oven, and it's a hot oven, it's set at 400, um, but I'm going to put it in my little toaster oven out in the sunroom because I don't want to heat the kitchen up. It's kind of warm today. Um, we will put our pecans in there as well and toast those for a few minutes. About the time you start smelling the pecans, that's when they're good and toasted. The, it just, you know, if somebody says, oh, toasted ones are so much better than raw ones, I would normally go, they think they do. I, I can't tell the difference, but I'm telling you to toast almonds or pecans uh, walnuts, not so much. I can't really tell that much of a difference, but almonds and pecans, phenomenal, phenomenal difference in toasted and not toasted. So we toast these pecans before we put them in this dessert because I want all that flavor in there. And if you don't like pecans, you can leave it out, but I would really say give it a try. All right, down here are my rolling pins and I'll use the wooden one for this. So you saw me just dusting this all over. Just make sure it doesn't have any areas that are not coated with flour because that part guaranteed going to stick to the countertop. So as I'm rolling it out, notice it's turning and I'm doing that with the rolling pin. And it'll keep its round shape a little bit better like that. Otherwise, it's going to be shaped like an amoeba or a slug or something like that. And then somebody out there is going to complain and say, I just can't roll out a pie crust. Mine turns out long and skinny and it's not round. Just keep turning it. And the less you work with this, the more stress it causes and anxiety because you're worried about touching it. But it, it truly does um, make the texture a lot better the less you handle it. So we'll get this rolled out. And I'll show you how to get it in the pie pan without it coming apart. All right, so what, what I'm basically doing is making sure everything's even. And I'm not meaning an even circle. I mean that the thickness on the edge is the same as the thickness in the center. You don't want, you know, big thick spots in it. So just go around the edges, make sure it's not too thick. I'm going to give this pan a little sprinkle of flour in the bottom just to double ensure that it does not stick. I don't normally have a problem with that, but who knows? Okay, sometimes I roll this up on my rolling pin like this. Start out and roll it like this, but I'm going to show you how to just fold it in fourths. That looks like it needs a little bit of flour right there. So I fold it in half, fold that in half, lift it up, transfer it over to your pan, put the center, that little point right there, put that in the center of your pan, unfold it, and unfold it. So we have that like this. Now this is going to be a baked pie crust. We're not going to bake our filling in this. So what we want to do is give it a nice pretty edge to it. 
and make sure it goes all the way to the edge of the pan. What you don't want to do is get it just on the inside of that edge because once you put it in that hot pan, that crust is going to slink down and you're going to say, I don't have an edge on my pie crust. It happens. So you want to be sure and give it enough holding on to that edge to where it doesn't go down. Now, as soon as I get finished crimping the edge of this, I'm going to stick it back in the refrigerator just to keep it super cold until my oven gets preheated. I turned it on just a few minutes ago, but I want to make this as cold as possible. So rule of thumb when you're making a pie crust, other than good ingredients and just doing what I've said so far, is cold dough, hot oven. Instantly put it in there. Don't let it preheat with your oven. Uh, make sure your oven is hot when you put that pie crust in there, but make sure your pie crust is cold when you put it in that hot oven. And that together is going to produce, again, that desired texture, and it also won't fall down into the pan. And I'm pushing this with my thumb on the edge. I'm hoping you can see what I'm doing. Pushing it because I can feel on the outside right here and then on the inside here about the thickness of the crust. I don't want it so thick on the edge that it's kind of uh, underbaked. I want it to all be baked the same. So I'm trying to get it all the same thickness all the way around. So with the crimping, I just take with my finger like this, turn it a little bit, move on to that little indention and do the same thing all the way around. There goes the clock again. It's funny how I notice that now, and I don't normally. Okay, the extra step, if you really, really want a pretty pie crust, take and brush this with um, a beaten egg or egg white. Just brush it right along the edges here, and it turns out beautifully. I mean, super, super beautifully. Okay, gonna get my fork and I'm just gonna poke holes in the bottom and this is going to keep it from bubbling up so much. Sometimes it will. You know, I take it out of the oven, I take my hand and just gently press it back down. It's okay. So here's what I've done. Just poke little holes in it. So that's gonna let that steam escape and it's gonna keep it from bubbling up so much. But I'm going to put this in the refrigerator now and then I'm going to pop it in the oven. We'll come back when I've baked the crust off and we'll get ready to make our filling to put in that. And um, so just hang tight. We'll be back in just a bit. All bunch of steps. So just, just go with it. All right, we're back. I just took the pie crust out of the oven in the sunroom, so in the little oven. So it is cooling off out there and then I'll bring it in. But we have two different layers for this pie that we need to get done before they ever go in the crust. And we want the crust to be completely cooled or these are just gonna dissolve in there. I mean, they will, they will melt so fast. So dissolve, melt, whatever you wanna do, they'll disappear. So what we wanna do is start with our softened butter. Now I have my handy dandy shower cap over the butter. I've had this out since this morning. So this is a fourth of a cup of butter and it is softened in this. All right, to this we are going to, uh, let me get my mixer out first. This mixer I've had for several years, but I had one right before that that was exactly like this and it messed up. All of a sudden one day I turn it on, it didn't smoke, it didn't do anything, it just didn't, didn't work. It stopped working. So um, they actually sent me another one, which was really nice. So I can't say enough good things about this company. This is a Sunbeam Mix Master. And the nice thing about it was they just said, throw the old one away. Well, I still have the extra beaters. So what's nice is if I'm doing a recipe where I have to mix something with the beaters and then I have to use that same type of beater again, I can have those chilling in the refrigerator. So I have all kinds of beaters up in that cabinet. 
sorry for the dog bark, and they see somebody outside from the sunroom. How dare these people come out in their yard? <laughs> and my dogs see them outside. My dogs think they own the whole neighborhood. They think they own the whole town. If they see anybody, they bark at them just to let them know they should not be outside their house where they can see them. Unless, of course, they want to give them a belly rub, then they can be outside. They are so, so funny. All right, to our a fourth a cup of butter that's been softened, we are going to add a cup of powdered sugar. And this is the powdered sugar that I'm using, just so you get a look at it. So I have a half cup measure. I'm going to put two of those in there. All right, we'll try not to make a cloud of powdered sugar with this. Secret is just start out as slow as you can, but even at that, sometimes it flies up. This original recipe makes two pies. So I've just divided everything in half and the recipe that I will put in the description will just be for one pie. But just know, normally when I make this pie, it makes two of them. So again, big bowl, little bit of contents, but I don't want this stuff flying all over the countertop. I don't want it flying on me. Um, and so again, just another example of why it's best to have a bowl that's too big as opposed to one that's a little bit too small. Okay, we need one egg in this. That was a pretty egg. Okay, we're gonna beat this till it's light and fluffy. That is about as smooth as one could possibly wish for. To that, we're gonna add just a little bit less than an eighth of a teaspoon. Really, it's just a pinch of salt, but you don't wanna be without the salt because it just enhances the sweetness so much. It truly does. To that, we're also gonna add about a fourth of a teaspoon of uh, vanilla, and this is just homemade vanilla made from organic vodka that's made from sugar cane. So I think that's kind of a novelty but it really is very good vanilla. And yes, I'm using a baby medicine dropper because I can see the measurements really, really well. Isn't that a cool bottle? I think that's neat. All right, beat this one more time.
All right, that is one layer of that. I'm going to get all this off here. And this is really, really soft right now as far as um, it doesn't feel firm. But once we chill it again, once it's in the crust and we chill it again, then it'll, it'll get firm again and it'll be a nice, very nice consistency for a pie. It's just this pie is really rich because of the butter, but it's light because of the, the flavor of the pineapple, I guess. I'm not sure, but it's just a delightful dessert. So just know that when my relative that gets these for their birthday every year, when their birthday rolls around in July, I'm not even mad, especially if I'm around to enjoy the pie. But I wouldn't eat as much as what I normally would, but man, back in the day, I could eat my share of this stuff. All right, we're gonna put this in the refrigerator to chill until our pie crust is ready and, well, until our pie crust is cooled off. Now we're gonna make our next layer and I have the bowl and the beaters chilling in the refrigerator. Try not to touch it any more than I have to just because my hands are warm. So we're gonna start with half a cup of heavy cream. And I think I'm gonna use this. I would just eyeball it, but I'm kind of heavy on the heavy cream. So we'll put our whisk beater on this. If you don't have a whisk beater, feel free to use the other kind of beater. That's fine. It's, it, this just works better for me. I think it whips it a little faster. Okay, we're beating this just until it forms little soft peaks. It's not stiff, but we're gonna put a fourth of a cup of sugar in there, powdered sugar. So about a half of this, half cup measure. Continue beating and we're gonna beat it to stiff peaks now. All right, that is beaten to stiff peaks. This is what you wanna be able to do. That's, that's pretty thick. All right, to that, we are gonna fold in our pecans and our pineapple. And the pineapple is 
just a fresh pineapple that I chopped up while ago. I was gonna use canned pineapple. In fact, I actually went to the store earlier to get the heavy cream and I got a can of crushed pineapple and then the more I got to thinking about it, I thought, I need to cut up a pineapple anyway because I make my husband's smoothies and I use pineapple in that, so may as well use that. So, I'm just using fresh pineapple. But if you use canned pineapple, I'm telling you, it's just as good. Just fold this in. We're gonna take our pecans, break those up. Once you toast them, they break pretty easily. So actually a lot easier than ones that are not toasted. And this is a half a cup of crushed pineapple and a fourth a cup of toasted chopped pecans. I'll save some of the pecans to put on the top, but I'll still crush them up when I put them on there. Just see what that looks like. So my pie crust took about 20 minutes at about 400 degrees, but if you bake it at a lower temperature, certainly adjust the time on that. And if you bake it at a high temperature, be sure you keep an eye on it because it will uh, get dark at the top and not quite be done in some parts of it, especially if it's a little bit thicker in some areas but we want your pie to turn out pretty as well as delicious. And I'm telling you, it will turn out delicious. Okay, again, this is just for one pie. So when I make the full recipe and make two pies, it makes a lot more filling than this. So this is what this looks like. That is so yummy. And no salt goes into this layer right here because we have salt in the other layer, but we're gonna put this in the fridge and we're gonna keep it chilled until our pie crust is ready to be um, a host to the filling. And then we'll come right back and I'll show you that process in just a bit. So hang in there. All right, crust is cooled off. All our fillings are cooled off. I'm in a race against time because I just looked on my app and my husband's on his way home. And the dogs will start barking if uh, he pulls in the garage, even though they're out in the sunroom. Okay, this is our first filling that we had, this is the one that does not have the pineapple and the pecans in it. This is the one that has the butter, the powdered sugar, the egg, the salt, and vanilla. And it smells so good. These keep really well for several days in the refrigerator. Not that they'll last this long if you're offering them to people right away. I'm telling you, they won't last long. All right, we're just gonna push this down into the crust. My crust did start that big bubble thing in the middle of it when it was cooking, so I just took my oven mitt, put it on, stuck my hand in the oven and pushed it down gently so the bubble just goes down. As long as your crust is uh, hot and it's still pliable, then you can push it down without it doing too much damage. Right. These are not super thick like piled up high pies because it's just kind of rich. You don't need that. But I may or may not have been known to make twice the filling but only one crust and it was a really tall pie. And it was really delicious. <laughs> All 
All right, just getting all that off there. Now this is our filling that has, well, this is the top of it, that has the pineapple and the whipped heavy cream and the pecans in it and the powdered sugar, of course. Not a lot of sugar in this. I usually just leave a little bit of the middle layer exposed just so, I don't know, just got kind of gives it a little interesting look to it. Plus people know that there's something below that whipped cream top. All right, I've got my pecans kind of crushed up. I'm gonna sprinkle those on the top. And that looks beautiful. Okay, thanks guys for joining us. Um, I hope that was I hope this wasn't too long and comprehensive that you look at it and go, I'm not making that. I'm telling you, it just do it. Okay, y'all just do it. <laughs> you will not regret it, and whoever you're making it for will certainly not regret it. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate you taking the time to watch, and if you did enjoy it. Hit that subscribe button if you're not a subscriber. If you can't figure out how to subscribe, please find out how. Um, I just love seeing people come through and go, you know what? They're going to keep watching them, so I just keep making the videos. Thanks for joining us, and we look forward to sharing something with you again real soon. Bye.